It's become clear that as modern people, we have substantially changed our internal, our gut microbiome. If we compare the species composition and number of bacteria in primitive people, for instance, who live primitive lives, to modern people, they're starkly different. They have species that we don't have, we have species that they don't have, and it's almost unrecognizably different. Does that mean we should mimic their microbiome? Well, that's not clear, but uh, I believe we're gonna have a lot of important lessons emerging from those experiences. Maybe selected species should be restored because we are losing many species. Even in the last 60 years, the microbiome has changed. Our Lactobacillus ruteri yogurt that restores Lactobacillus ruteri is an example of an organism, a bacterial organism that we've lost only in the past 60 years or so with fairly extravagant effects. I think there's gonna be more lessons like that. But it's clear that the modern microbiome is, is, is essentially a disaster. And we're seeing evidence of that in such phenomena as colon cancer appearing in people in their 20s and 30s. Colon cancer is traditionally thought of, thought of as a disease of people who are in their 70s. Now it's showing up in people in their 20s and 30s. And we know that a lot of colon cancer is caused by massive disruptions of the microbiome, the gut microbiome. We're seeing people show up with spontaneous Clostridium difficile infections, enterocolitis. Traditionally, once again, people get Clostridium difficile, C. diff we say, after a course of antibiotics. So it's a complication typically of a course of antibiotics. Say you take an a, a, a antibiotic like say ciprofloxacin, and then after you finish your course of antibiotics, you start having bloody diarrhea and abdominal pain. And that can be C. diff enterocolitis. And if you don't treat it with several antibiotics, you can die from it. And it's very difficult to eradicate now. That organism is becoming more and more resistant to antibiotics. And that's why there's talk of fetal transplants that is taking the microbiome of another person, presumably healthier than you at least, and transferring it to you, and it gets rid of the C. diff in most cases. So once again, an example of the altered microbiome of modern people. The explosion of SIBO and SIFO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, small intestinal fungal overgrowth, those two conditions are exceptionally common. And by the way, they coexist in at least a third of the people. That is, if you have SIBO, you also have SIFO and vice versa. It may be even higher. I think it's more like a half of people who have SIBO also have SIFO and vice versa. But that's an example of massively disrupted bowel flora because those are instances where either unhealthy bacterial species or fungal species like Candida albicans have proliferated in the colon and then ascended up into the ileum, jejunum, duodenum, and stomach. And they have a whole host of inflammatory consequences like autoimmune diseases, mental and emotional effects, IBS or irritable bowel syndrome symptoms, fibromyalgia, uh, diverticular disease, and of course, colon cancer. And the explosion of autoimmune diseases. It's not uncommon now for about 8 to 13 percent of people in Western countries to have one, two, or three autoimmune diseases. And a lot of that can be backtracked. Maybe not all of it, but a lot of it can be backtracked back to changes in the microbiome, unhealthy changes in the microbiome. So why has this all happened? Why do modern people have such massive disruption of the microbiome? Well, I won't pretend to have all the answers, but there's several answers emerging. And once you know what has changed your microbiome, you can start to correct each and every one of these factors in the hopes of allowing a healthier microbiome to emerge. So first of all, prescription drugs, especially stomach acid blocking drugs like H2 blockers and the so-called PPIs, the proton pump inhibitors like Asifex and Prolisec, those drugs we know change the microbiome and encourage SIBO. Steroids allow proliferation of fungi, so that's a big cause for fungal overgrowth. We don't know a lot about the microbiome implications of, of most other drugs because no one's ever looked at it. But if you're on a prescription drug, think about this. Antibiotics. So antibiotics change the microbiome at least for months to years, if not for your entire life. So children get a lot of antibiotics as kids have their microbiome changed the rest of their lives. Herbicides and pesticides in food that can change your microbiome. GMOs, BT toxin glyphosate containing GMOs, they alter your bowel flora, and they may alter it permanently, especially if the BT toxin gene uh, gets inserted into some of your, your body's microbiome. It starts, your body starts to express its own BT toxin, its own insecticide. Water, 
because we can't drink water from streams or rivers anymore because they have pesticide, herbicide runoff, uh, sewage runoff, et cetera, we have to filter our water and then have it chlorinated or chloraminated, which is even worse because it's longer lasting. So being exposed to chlorinated, chloraminated water is an issue. Grain consumption. Grains have numerous components that change the microbiome. The amylopectin A carbohydrate, essentially a sugar, is like sugar in that it encourages fungal overgrowth, it encourages growth of unhealthy species. Glidin, highly inflammatory. Glidin-derived peptides, highly inflammatory. Glidin-derived opioid peptides. You know how you take opioids for pain and it gives you constipation? Likewise, glidin-derived opioid peptides, we know, slow the propulsive motion, we say peristalsis, of the intestines and add to constipation. And that's why many times people who go grain-free have uh, a restoration of normal bowel movements. Wheat germaglutinin. You have another very potent bowel toxin that blocks the action of the hormone cholecystokinin that allows your pancreas and gallbladder to function. When cholecystokinin is in the neighborhood, you can't have normal digestion. That changes bowel flora. Emulsifying agents, especially synthetic emulsifying agents, especially polysorbate 80 and hydroxymethylcellulose, those two change the bowel flora because they disrupt the mucus lining. It allows inflammatory phenomena to emerge and it changes bacterial composition of your microbiome. So that's a, a list of some of the most offensive factors in modern life that change your microbiome. Well, how do you remedy all this? Well, if you know all those factors, you can address each and every one. Prescription drugs, try to get off them. How do you do that? Well, follow my program, Three Belly Total Health Program, Undoctored, uh, Wild Naked, Unwashed. Those are programs that help you get off prescription medications. Uh, minimize your exposure to antibiotics. If you're give, being given an antibiotic, make sure there's a very good reason for it. If you have bad pneumonia or pyelonephritis, you have to take an antibiotic. But if you have a viral infection and you're being given an antibiotic just to do something, the doctor just wants to do something in case it converts to, that's a, a situation where you want to ask tough questions and maybe not even take it. But the herbicide and pesticide exposure, Avoid those by buying organic foods. Likewise, GMOs. Avoid GMOs, of course. Now, if you're following the Wheat Belly and Undoctored programs, where we have eliminated all wheat, grains, as well as soy, you've eliminated virtually all the sources of GMOs. But that's So avoid GMOs, choose organic. Filter your water. Either reverse osmosis or charcoal filter or one of those pitcher filters. Do something to remove all the contamination, contaminants in water. Of course, be grain-free, completely grain-free, and avoid all those, that myriad uh, list of components in grains that disrupt bowel flora. And of course, avoid sugars. So there you have it. The basic efforts to start the process of reordering, rebuilding a healthy microbiome.